Uh, okay, so I haven't shared the screen. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can I can start at any time. So Yeah, we can start now. Okay. So okay, so let me continue my this this lecture uh, on direct sum and of regular rings. So last time we we defined uh, strongly f regular rings and we Sorry. So we defined strongly f regular rings and we we didn't say much. We just proved two things. So first of all, uh, strongly f regular local rings are domains. And then we proved that strongly uh, f regular is a local property. Okay. So, oh, and by the way, so I think I should say that uh, there, I just realized that there are some overlap of my lecture with the previous lectures by Neil and Kevin. Uh, so. I think one point is that my uh, my I want to make this lecture like more like self-contained, so you can um, you don't need to know a lot of type closure in order to understand uh, the main theorem. Okay, so let me uh, just one second. Okay, so I'm gonna start today by recall this uh, theorem of Kuhn's. Uh, that uh, says uh, R is regular if and only if the Frobenius is flat. A ring R of Kerosene P uh, is regular if and only if the Frobenius for one E or equivalent for large E, so R to the lowest R um, is flat. Okay, and so um, in particular, uh, so in our so we we will mainly apply this Kuhn's theorem when uh, R is local and at finite. If R and K at finite local, so then uh, in this case, uh, since F e lower star R is uh, finally generated, so flat is the same as um, free because the ring is uh, no theorem local. So, uh, so then um, R is regular um, and only if um, it's finite free. Okay, so let me just give, so I, I, of course like, so the really, the hard direction in this theorem is actually the, uh, if you're assuming the Frobenius is flat, uh, then R is regular. But uh, actually for, for us, we're gonna use it in the, for only for the easy uh, direction. That is if, if R is regular, so then uh, the Frobenius is flat. So let me just sketch uh, a very, so I'm sure, I think uh, Neil already did a proof of that, but let me just give a, uh, another way of uh, prove this when uh, R is at finite. So, so, so suppose, okay, I'm, go, I'm, I'm just gonna try to sketch the proof of this in particular statement. Uh, so if, I, if you have a uh, regular local ring, uh, which is at finite, uh, so then you know from this uh, homological uh, criterion of regular ring that every module has finite projective dimension. So, so you got, uh, so in, in if R is regular, then uh, projective dimension of this plus the depth of uh, this module is equal to the depth of the ring. But then, uh, uh, so these two are obviously the same because the, uh, uh, so I mean, so from, from this you get uh, the projective dimension uh, it's zero. So in, in other words, uh, F e lower star R is a projective uh, 
is a finely generated and projective R module, so it's finite free. So. So this is, you know, uh, the easy direction under the uh, assumption that uh, you, your ring is at finite. So I'm not going to prove the other direction, and we won't use it actually. Okay. So so last time we defined this uh, strongly uh, f regular ring. Uh, so the first, I mean, so the first thing we want to say is that. Uh, uh, regular rings are strongly f regular. So, and f finite regular ring. Of course, B is strongly f regular. Okay, so let me, I think uh, Kevin already proved this, but let me just give a, a quick uh, or remind you that. Uh, the quick argument. So, uh, so first of all, last time we already showed that uh, strongly f regular. So both uh, regular and strongly f regular are local properties. So you may assume uh, R is f fine uh, R and K is f finite and local. Okay, just track this on local rings. And so then by, by this Kuhn's theorem, by Kuhn's, by this Kuhn's theorem above, uh, oops. <clears throat> we know that Fe lower star R um, is a finite free R module. Okay, so this is uh, regular tells us. All right, and so now we want to show that R is, uh, so this, uh, under these assumptions, R is strongly f regular, right? So remember for what does this strongly f regular mean? It means, so let me quickly remind you the definition in, in words. So you wanted to show that for every element, for every C, not in any minimal prime of R, uh, so there exists E large enough such that the map from R to F e lower star R, sending one to F e lower star C splits as a map of R modules. Okay, and so now, uh, so we are we are in the case that uh, we have a uh, we have a local. I mean, we have a regular local ring, so it's a domain. So saying that C is not a minimal prime is just saying C is not zero. So now for any uh, C non zero. Uh, so uh, you wanted to show like you can find E such that uh, one to the map goes from one to F E lower star C uh, splits. So now, uh, but what we know now is that F E lower star R is a finite free R module. So the claim is that uh, uh, I claim, so there exists E bigger than zero uh, such that, uh, so this, you look at this element F e lower star C, of course this belongs to F e lower star R. Uh, so this element is part of a minimal basis uh, of this free mode over R. Okay, so this is pretty uh, easy to see because otherwise, uh, I mean, if this is not part of a minimal basis, uh, then what you know is that, oops, sorry. sorry. Yeah. So if this is, if this is, if this fails, so then saying that this is not part of a minimal basis or minimal generator, it's just saying this element belongs to the maximum ideal times I feel lower star R. Okay. Uh, but uh, remember how we, how does this notation mean? So if you if you multiply some element inside R, if you want to pull that inside, you have to raise it to the Frobenius power. So this is equals to F e lower star m to the bracket p to the. Okay. Just 
put a tab here. So if F u lower star c uh, is not part of a minimal basis, so then you get F u lower star c belongs to F u lower star of this uh, m to the bracket t to the e, this idea. Okay, so for all e, right? So we want to find, we want to say there exists some e such that it's part of minimal basis, and this, if this is not the case, then F u lower star c belongs to this for all e. Okay, but quick, but of course this is a contradiction because uh, F u lower star c belongs to F u lower star m to the bracket p to the e means, uh, uh, right? So, but this means c belongs to m to the bracket p to the e for all e, right? But this is zero by the Crow intersection theorem. So this is a contradiction. I'm just putting this in the parentheses. I'm showing that there exists E such that F e lower star C is part of a minimal basis. Okay, but if this is part of a minimal basis, then you can send it back to R. So you now since, let me just continue here. Uh, since F e lower star C <coughs> is part of, um, Minimal basis of F u lower star R as an R module over R. So the map R to F u lower star R. So think about this as just a free module now. So uh, the one to F u lower star C squared. Okay, so this is a, a theorem that uh, follows from Kuhn's theorem. I actually, again, I want to emphasize this really follows from the easy direction of the Kuhn's theorem. You don't really need to know the other, the hard direction. <laughs> okay, so are there any questions? All right. So, oops, sorry. Can you clarify again how you know that in this case, your ring is a domain? Sorry, can you see the shared screen now? Sorry, yeah. I accidentally. Okay. Uh, can I clarify why this is a domain? Oh, yeah. It's a good question because it's because we reduce to the local case. Right. So, okay. I have a regular ring. I localize it. I have a regular local ring. And then there's the. Oops. Ah, I don't know how I just. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, can you see the shared screen? Yes. Yeah, okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so the uh, the reason we can assume R is a domain is because we reduce the local case and there's a, uh, we know that regular local rings are uh, integral domains, yeah. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Yeah, feel free to just interrupt me or uh, uh, someone should, <laughs> I, I can't see the, the, uh, the chat. So uh, sorry. If 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 you put in the question in the chat, uh, please please also just remind me that I can address the question. Okay. So uh, okay, good. So we have okay. At least we have one example of strong F regular rings now, which is a regular local ring uh, or regular ring in general. And uh, so so uh, I will uh, later. Today, I will give you some more examples of strong F regular rings. But uh, at this point, I first want to prove a property uh, about strong F regular rings. Here's a theorem. Um, RBN uh, F finite. And strongly F regular ring of characteristic. Characteristic P. Um, so then uh, the, the property I want to show you is that any uh, module finite tension splits. So then R to S splits. Um, for any 
module finite uh, extension s. Okay, so let's prove this. Um, so since s is module finite, uh, uh, to track this one, so to track this splitting, uh, it's enough to track this splits at any uh, prime ideal of R. So, I mean, the tracking the splitting is a local property. So we may assume um, RMK um, is local and strong effort. Okay. In particular, it is a, we, we may assume it is a domain. So in particular, uh, we may assume R is a domain. Because last time, remember last time we showed uh, strongly F regular local rings are integral domains. Okay, so now uh, uh, I have a, module finite extension of a domain, so. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. So is there a typo in the statement of the theorem? So you mean uh, F finite and strongly F regular? Uh, let R be an F, oh yes, thanks. And strongly F regular local. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's a typo here also, there's two off, yeah. Thank you. Okay, any, any other comments, questions? Right, so, okay, so, so far I did, I basically did nothing. I'm just saying tracking a finite extension splits, it is enough to track this splits locally on spec R, right? So you can track, uh, you can track, you can localize the prime ideal of R and track this split for every, for every prime P. And so then you can localize R at a prime and then replace S by the, you know, corresponding localization and to track that finite extension splits. Okay, so, and you do that, uh, you may assume uh, the base ring is local. And last time we showed strongly F regular local rings are integral domain. So we may assume R is a domain. Okay, so this is the first reduction. And so the next reduction, I want to say you may also assume S is a domain. So by just modeling or killing a minimal prime. So any minimal prime of S uh, lies over, uh, you know, a minimal prime, uh, just pick a minimal prime of S, you know, it contract to, uh, zero, so R is a domain, so it's contract to the zero prime ideal. And so, uh, and and just kill that minimal prime. By killing a minimal prime of S, uh, we may assume S is also a domain. Okay, so I hope this is clear, right? So the point is that, so you want to show like R to S is split. And so now you pick a, minimal prime that contract to zero. So you modulo that minimal prime, let's call it P. So now the, the point here is that I want to say uh, it is enough to check this composition is split because if the composition is split, then the first map split, right? Because you can just, I mean, saying that R2 S mod P split means you can map, there, there's a, you know, there's a, there's an arrow here that sends like one to one, but if, if you, you if you have a map here that sends one to one, you can take the composition, right? So then S to R to S, you can also send like one to one. So this is just a, some sort of like a trivial uh, observation. You can compose, you can modulo a minimal prime of S. So yeah, hopefully, I mean, just maybe this is a small exercise or just very easy to track. Okay. All right. So we may assume both R and S are domain now. Okay. So now what's the advantage of doing this? So now uh, S is a torsion free R module. Um, so there exists uh, an R linear map so it's a finite and torsion-free R module. So you can find a non-zero map from S to R. So there is an R linear map, theta from S to R. Oops. Uh, 
such that theta of one is non-zero. Okay, so I hope this is clear. So you have a torsion-free R module. So all I'm saying is that there is a non-zero map back to R, torsion-free. So the reason is that, well, so it's a torsion-free and finite R module. So if you tensor with a fraction field of R, you got a finite dimensional, you know, vector space, and then you, you know, you, you have a map back to, uh, to the to the field. So generically, if you tensor with a fraction field, you obviously have non-zero maps. Okay, but the every uh, at the fraction field level, everything is just base change from a map from S to R. So you know there is a non-zero map from S to R. Okay, that's all what I'm saying. Okay. Um, and now I'm gonna use. Okay, of, of course, this is <clears throat> this is not what I mean. <clears throat> this is not really what we want. We want to show that the map uh, splits. That is, we want a map ascending one to one. And what we know at the moment is that we only know there's a non-zero map. Okay. So now we have to use this crucial, uh, strongly f-regular property uh, to say that you can uh, you can sort of modify this map, or you or not. Sorry, not really modify. You can create a new map that sending one to one. Okay, so the idea is very simple. So, so now since R is um, strongly of regular, um, we can find E bigger than zero such that um, this R2, I'm just repeating the definition, R2 FER sending one to F E lower star C splits. <clears throat> right, so this little C here is the image of theta one that I, uh, that I, uh, that I define here. Okay, so now maybe it's just easier like, to draw, to just approve the theorem by drawing a diagram. I have R to S. I have F e lower star R to <clears throat> F e lower star S. Okay, so I have a map uh, from uh, this, this map theta from S to R that's sending phi one to C. So in other words, well, I can just apply F e lower star here. So just use it. You have a map from here to here. All right, and this map sending one to F e lower star C. Okay, so this is by what we uh, what we asserted here. You have an R linear map theta sending one to C. So if you uh, apply this F e lower star, so you have uh, a map from F e lower star S to F e lower star R sending one to, or maybe I should, let me just be very careful here. Maybe I should write, F e lower star one here to um, F e lower star C. Okay, and so now we also know by this strongly F regular uh, assumption, um, you can, <clears throat> right? You can map this to one because uh, the map from R to F e lower star R sending one to F e lower star C splits. But what does that mean? That means you, you have a map the other way around, sending F e lower star C to one. And so now, uh, basically, the, uh, it's, it's clear. So, right, so, so now what you know is that this composition splits, right? You have, you have the natural map from R to S, and you have the natural Frobenius from S to F e lower star S, and this compo composition splits, because I already tell you what are the two maps, sending F e lower star one to one. Okay, and so now you use this trick I told you before, if you have a composition R to S to F e lower star S, and if the composition splits, so then this map splits. Okay, so let me just say the diagram shows that the composition from R to S to F e lower star S. So these are both these are both the natural maps, like sending one to one. And this is the natural Frobenius sending one to F e lower star one. So these composition splits, right? But so this, uh, which implies R to S splits. 
the old, I mean, as a map of R modules. I, I, by saying splits, I always say like splits as a map of R modules. Okay, any question? Okay, so this is a uh, this is the first uh, property uh, that we uh, we showed about strong F regular rings. And let me just mention that. Uh, well, just pause a little bit. So uh, there's a okay. So we show that this very nice property is strong F regular rings splits off from all the finite extensions, and you can ask about the converse. And that's actually a, a important uh, open question. So there's an open question. Um, so um, I mean, say, let's say R is, a, you, you can ask this question beyond the F finite case, but let me just focus on this. So like R uh, is uh, F finite domain, pairs to key. Uh, if R to S splits uh, for all finite uh, extensions, um, then is the ring R strongly afraid? So this is not known. So there are many uh, partial uh, answers that we know. For example, when R is Gorenstein, this was proved by Hawks or Hunicky and uh, Singh, Anurag Singh, uh, extended to the Q Gorenstein case. And there are some further uh, evidence on this. But uh, as far as I know, this question is uh, open in general. And you might also, uh, I'm pretty sure like uh, the uh, Neil and uh, Kevin, they talk about the uh, weekly, so the uh, the, the open question about strongly F regular and weakly F regular. And uh, so, I mean, and, and it turns out this question, uh, if, I mean, this open, open problem that I stated here, if this can be answered affirmatively, so then this also implies that uh, strongly F regular and weakly F regular are equivalent. Uh, because uh, this property, so uh, R2S splits for finite extension, uh, it is enough to assume R is weakly F regular other than strongly F regular. So, uh, uh, Wing Chun, that, that property of splitting out of all the monofinite extensions, that's a uh, splinter is what it's called, right? Right, this is, a, this is the splinter, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thanks. so I'm saying this question is, uh, so this question implies the weak and strong conjecture because uh, weakly F regular implies splinter, implies this property. And if you can show this property implies strongly F regular, then you also equate the weak and strong. So, and you know, one thing that, uh, you know, at least for some experts, they, they, they prefer, or they want to work with this, uh, uh, sorry, this, this stronger problem is that, so it's, 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 it's actually not very hard to see that this is a local property also. So what, again, last time I already said, right? So uh, one uh, weekly F regular, uh, we don't know whether that property localizes. Oh, well, whether that's a local property. But for strongly F regular, I already showed you last time. So strongly F regular is a local property. And this property, so like saying split off from the finite extension, this is also easily, you can show that it passes to localizations. So to prove this, so to prove this problem, you can you can assume R is local, or you can even assume R is a, R is a um, you know, complete local, you know, normal, something like that. So, I mean, uh, this, this, this is this, uh, yeah. But, Lushan, but anyway, in the, the chat. Um, sure. So the first one, uh, Ashik asks, is there a general result where S is not a torsion-free R module? Is there a general result? Well, the, 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 okay, maybe I should clarify. This theorem here doesn't, doesn't, you know, this theorem here doesn't say S is torsion-free over R. You could have torsion, but uh, what I'm saying is that we can reduce to the case as is torsion free. Is that is that answer the question? So the, the theorem itself doesn't say it's, it's just a finite extension. Ashik, does that answer your question? Yeah. I mean... Okay, uh, I don't see a response yet. But um, the, the next question is um, from Kumari and asks uh, under this property, I assume this property is being splinter, um, is R weakly F regular? 
No, that's not, that's a good question. That's also not known, right? So um, maybe I should say the open problem is that if R is an infinite domain, classic P, if R to S space for all finite extensions, finite extension S, so then is R strongly F regular or at least weakly F regular? So both, both are not known. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? Okay, so uh, let, let me move on. So, okay, so, okay, so there's a corollary um, uh, of the results we proved so far. Okay, we, so let me just go back a little bit. So we proved regular rings are strongly F regular and uh, strongly F regular rings splits from all the finite extension. So putting this together, um, if R is regular, uh, and carries a P, um, then R to S splits um, for any module finite extension. Okay, so, well, if you, Yeah, okay. So this, if you're putting the previous two theorems together, you already, you, I mean, this this immediately implies this corollary when um, R is F finite, right? Because we showed, F, because I mean, the the definition I gave you for strong F regular rings, uh, you know, have this implicit F finite assumption built in. Uh, and we show like uh, F finite regular rings are strongly F regular. So, but you know, you can easily reduce to the F finite case to prove the general case of this. So um, again, so to, to show like this R to S splits for uh, any finite extension, it's a local property on R. So we may assume uh, R is local, R is regular local. Uh, and then uh, we may further complete R and S uh, to assume R is a complete uh, regular local ring. We may further um, complete to assume uh, R is a complete Regular local ring. Okay, so see, there's so this I left as an exercise. So to track, uh, basically, the exercise says to track a finite extension or a finite map splits, uh, you can complete at the maximum ideal to check that after your completion, the map splits. And if that's true, so then the original map also splits. Okay, so this is an exercise. Um, but that, okay, so I want to reduce the, uh, the module finite case, but now, uh, uh, so R is a complete regular local ring of characteristic P, part of equal characteristic in particular. So by co-instruction theorem, R is isomorphic to a power series ring over uh, a field of characteristic P. Uh, and so then, uh, well, this ring is not necessarily F finite because this field may not be F finite, right? Uh, but you can you can easily make the field F finite. I mean, uh, so last time I already said, so for field F finite just means, you know, uh, K to the one where P is a finite dimensional K vector space. So for example, any perfect field or any algebraic closed field uh, is automatically F finite. So, So notice you have a split extension. Uh, 
you just enlarge the field to the say algebraic closure. And so it's an exercise. I mean, this is a pretty easy exercise. Uh, track this, this map is a split extension. Okay. And so now uh, let me, let me, okay. This is, this is R. Let me call this R tilde. Okay. So now you just track this commutative diagram R to S. This goes to R tutor, um, goes to R tutor tensor R S. And of course, this is still regular because it's just it's it's a power series over over an algebraic closed field. Okay. So now uh, the point is that uh, so now. Uh, uh, Right. Okay. I'm gonna use uh, I'm gonna use that trick again and again. So uh, so now this ring is regular and f finite. So it's strongly f regular, and uh, this is a finite extension of this strongly f regular ring. So this map splits, and this map also splits. This is you know th because this is just a very down to earth map that just enlarged the coefficient field, right? So this map splits. This map splits. So the composition. Uh, from R to this R to the tensor R with S, this composition splits, but then it factors through R to S. So R to S also splits, okay? So you can easily, so I, I omit the details, but this is how you how you do this, okay? So you have a splitting here. So let me just, okay? And then you can just uh, take the composition. I mean, I, I, I do this just, just to, uh, you know, I do this just to reduce to the case that uh, we can use the theorem, we can cite the theorem we proved because we only showed uh, this regular implies strong as regular, et cetera. We only show this for in the F finite setting. So we just, <clears throat> okay. Any question? Let me, let me perhaps put a remark here. So, so in this corollary, we showed uh, uh, regular rings uh, splits up from the module finite extensions, but we have an assumption that uh, carries a key. So now let me just mention, here's a remark. Uh, but, uh, so this corollary, um, The corollary holds without assuming uh, the rings uh, has character P, but this is a very difficult result. Um, uh, let's see. But this is only proved recently, uh, well, sort of recently by uh, Andre in 2016 that uh, actually this corollary holds for any regular ring, even even uh, does not uh, for any regular ring even uh, without assuming this positive characteristic or something. <clears throat> okay, so and then okay, so. Uh, Okay, let me just say another easy corollary of this. Um, if R is at finite and strongly at regular, um, so then R is normal. Oops. Um, in particular, one-dimensional uh, strongly f regular rings are regular. So we know that regular rings are strongly f regular, and so the converse holds for one-dimensional rings, but it fails for two-dimensional or higher dimension already. So this is pretty easy. So. Uh, So suppose R is not normal, suppose R is not normal. So then you can write a fraction. So then there exists 
from A over B, um, that is uh, uh, integral. Well, okay, let's say, just reduce the local case. Let's just assume R is a domain because normal is a local property. We can just, assume, maybe I should say that at the beginning, but uh, let's assume R is a domain if you like, right? So because we can reduce the local case as usual. So, and okay, so now suppose this is not normal. So then there is fixed a fraction like A over B uh, that is integral over R, okay? Uh, but the element A over B itself is not in R, okay? So, uh, so now we set R prime equals to R adjoin this A over B, okay? So this is an integral element Adjoining an integral element is a finite uh, extension. So then uh, R to R prime uh, is a module finite extension. So now we use the theorem we just proved for module finite extension, it splits. So uh, there exists a splitting. So i.e. there is a map from theta from r prime to r uh, sending theta one equals to one. But now uh, you immediately see a contradiction. Basically this normalization, if you, uh, <clears throat> the normalization map or partial normalization map, they, they never split unless it's the identity. So, <clears throat> okay, so the point is that, so there are four, uh, so thus, um, Right, okay, so I'm saying if you have a splitting from R prime to R, that sort of forces uh, this fraction A over B uh, inside R. So the reason is that, so now you're right, okay, B, oops. so now let's just, uh, so let's just think about what is B times um, theta of A over B? Well, but that thing should be, since the theta is R linear, so this is theta of A, you can pull this B inside, uh, but theta A is A times theta one, which is, which is well, this is A, all right? And so, so basically this, this tells you theta A over B, it has to be A over B. Uh, so in other words, so this is in R, right? Because theta is a map from R prime to R. So uh, theta of anything should be inside R, but we also we also convince ourselves theta of a over b it has to be a over b because it multi because b times that equals to a so it has to be a over b so, <laughs> so we show like the a over b this fraction it itself has to be inside r which is a contradiction okay so strongly f regular rings are normal and we know normal, uh, one-dimensional normal rings are regular. So one-dimensional strongly f regular rings are regular. Okay. Any question? Okay, so the last theorem I'm gonna talk about for in this second lecture uh, as I promised, so uh, I want to give you some more examples of strongly f regular rings. So, so far, while well, we define these rings, we prove a lot of properties, but so far the only example we have is this, this regular rings, right? So we prove like regular rings are strongly f regular. And I want to uh, uh, have some other examples. So, but let me just prove a theorem and using the theorem, you can write down some, a lot of more examples. <clears throat> Okay, so let R and S be at finite rings of character P. So if R is a direct summit of S, then S is strongly uh, F regular. So then R is strong F regular. Okay. So what does it mean by saying R is a direct sum? And well, so saying like you have a map from R to S that splits uh, 
splits as, as a map of R modules, as R modules. Okay, so this is what I mean by saying R is a uh, direct sum of, uh, uh, of, of S. Okay. So, um, so, okay, so let's just try to prove this. So, okay, so actually the, the sort of the hard part in this proof is to uh, reduce to the case that S is a domain, okay? So uh, I, let me just try to, uh, let me just try to skip that details. I'm just saying, uh, we may assume that uh, both R and S are domains. Okay, so, I mean, uh, you can see the lecture notes. It's, it's, it's not really hard, but it's just a, a little bit, you know, lengthy to do it here. Uh, it's like a one or two paragraph proof, but, uh, so, okay, so maybe I, let me point out, it's, it's uh, to show, okay, you can always assume R is, you know, uh, R, okay, so, so the way you do this is that you can, you, you, you can first assume R is local because uh, you want to show R is strongly F regular, uh, and we know this is a local property, so you can localize at the maximum ideal of R or prime ideal of R, you can, you can assume R is local, and so then you replace R by, say, R localizing P and S by, you know, the corresponding localization. And then uh, you use the normal assumption on X, right? So uh, the assumption is that S is strongly F regular. So you don't know whether S is local. If you know S is local, then you are reduced to the domain case because strongly F regular local rings are domain. But unfortunately you don't know S is local. Even you, you reduce to the case R is local, you don't know S is local. But the point is that uh, since S is normal, uh, you can write S as a product of normal domains. And if R is a direct sum of uh, S, then you can show that actually R is a direct sum of one of the factors. So that you reduce the case S is a, is a domain. But anyway, so this requires an argument and it's, 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 it's not hard. And I just, uh, I think I'm running out of time. So I will just uh, omit the details. You can refer to the notes. Okay. But uh, after you're assuming this both R and S are domains, oops. Sorry, goes up. Can you see the screen, shared screen? I think I'm back to the shared screen. Good. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so let me just quickly finish it off, uh, finish this in like one minute. So, so the, after assuming like both rings are domains, it's gonna be very easy. So, uh, okay, so you want to show R is strongly regular now. So the so just, just think about the definition. Um, well, let's see. Again, maybe it's just easier to uh, to draw a diagram. So, um, so you want to show for every C not in any minimum prime of R. So you can use this E such that you know R to F lower star R sending one to F lower star C splits. But R is a domain, so you just just focus on this non-zero uh, element C. Okay, and. Uh, so now things S is strongly F regular, right? So uh, there exists E bigger than zero, uh, such that uh, there exists there exists a map phi from F e lower star S to S, uh, sending this F e lower star C to one. Okay, and so now. Uh, maybe again, as I said, I just draw a diagram. You have R to S, and here I have F E lower star R, and here I have F E lower star S. Okay, so this this is so the these are the natural inclusion. So sending one to one, and the vertical map I'm going to send in one to F E lower star C. So this goes to F E lower star C. Okay, and so now what do you know? Let me just use it in blue. You know you have a splitting from here to here, sending F e lower star C to one. Okay, so this is by our assumption that S is strong F. Remember, S is a domain, 
it is important. So C is not zero. So C is not in any minimal prime of S because S is a domain. So you can you can map F e lowers R C back to one, but R to S is split. R is a direct sum map. So this this map split sending one to one, like one maps to one. Okay. So now you use that trick uh, that I said earlier again and again. So, so now you have a composition from R to F e lower star R, sending one to F e lower star C, and you have a further map to F e lower star S, and this composition splits. But then that implies the first map better be split also. So R to F e lower star R, sending one to F e lower star C split. Okay, and that's the proof. Oops. Let me just say the diagram implies R to F e lower star R, sending one to F e lower star C. And using this, uh, okay, so now using this last theorem, you can actually write down a lot of examples of uh, strongly F regular rings because well, we know regular rings are strongly F regular, but then this theorem tells you direct sum of regular rings are strongly F regular. Okay, so example. Let me give you two uh, easy examples. So, for example, you can take R to be k x y z mod x y minus z square. If you don't like this, let me just tell you this is isomorphic to k s square s t t square. Okay, so this is a direct sum end of polynomial ring two variables. This is a second Veronese. So it, it, uh, it's a sum end of this regular ring. So, and by this theorem, we just proved um, R is strongly regular. Well, okay, let's say K is an F finite field if you worry about that, but anyway. Um, well, there's another, let me give you another example. So, okay, of course, more generally, you can say uh, all the Veronese subrings of polynomial rings are strongly F regular because polynomial ring is regular, so strongly F regular, and Veronese rings are always direct sum of the polynomial ring, so they're strongly F regular. So let's look at this uh, KXY. ZW minus XY minus ZW. So this is isomorphic to the segue product. Uh, or this is K, AC, AD, BC, BD. So this is a segue product of two polynomial rings. And again, uh, so this is a direct sum end. of this S, which is K, this is R. Um, right, so you can check this is a, this is a direct sum of a polynomial ring in uh, four variables. And so uh, by the theorem, so this, this R uh, is strongly regular. And more generally, uh, you can also say the separate product of polynomial rings are uh, strong air frame. Well, again, um, let me just say K is an F finite field if you are worried about this F finite ESO. But anyway, uh, this is uh, some examples of, I mean, you can use this theorem that we proved here uh, to write down a lot of examples of uh, strongly F regular things. Uh, I think I, I, I can, I just want to stop here for this second lecture. So.